Hello, gemstone hunter. Let me explain something that almost no one realizes. Not every diamond starts out sparkling, and it almost never reveals itself in the way we expect. I often say that, in nature, what is truly valuable is usually hidden behind what seems too common. And this is where the question that changes everything comes in. What if that dull rock, lying on the ground, the kind you'd step on without thinking twice, was precisely the clearest sign that there are diamonds right beneath your feet. Well, there is a specific type of rock that practically reveals the presence of diamond deposits, but almost no one knows how to recognize it. And that's exactly what I'm going to explain here. Throughout this content, I'll show you how to identify this rare rock, why it only appears in very specific environments, and how this knowledge has already led ordinary people to extraordinary discoveries. If this has already made your mind click, go ahead, like and subscribe to the channel because this kind of knowledge doesn't come around every day and what follows will completely change the way you look at the ground you walk on. When I talk about diamonds, I like to start with what nobody sees. I always ask people to imagine walking on absolutely ordinary ground, without shine, without striking color, without anything that catches the eye, just any ground the kind that goes unnoticed every day. Now, what almost nobody stops to think about is that, more than 150 kilometers deep, at that same point, crystals may have formed under unimaginable pressure for millions of years. It's strange to think about, I know, but that's exactly how the Earth works. Silent, patient, hiding giant stories beneath a simple appearance. While we look at the surface, the real spectacle happens far below, out of sight, but not out of reach of those who learn to observe the right signs. Over time, I've learned that this search for stones that change destinies is not a modern phenomenon. Since ancient times, humankind has tried to decipher the codes of nature, even without fully understanding what they were doing. Curiously, the greatest diamond discoveries in history didn't begin with someone finding a crystal sparkling in the sun, but with the identification of strange displaced rocks, almost out of context. Rocks that didn't match their surrounding environment, that seemed to tell a different story from the common soil. This is the detail that almost no one mentions. The diamond is rarely the first sign. Before it comes the rock that brought it to the surface, the silent witness to a profound, violent, and rare process. And understanding this completely changes how we interpret the ground we walk on preparing our gaze for something much more specific. Now I'm going to tell you something that completely changes most people's logic. Diamonds don't appear in nature on their own. They don't sprout from nowhere. Nor do they lie scattered waiting for someone to stumble upon them. Every diamond that reaches the surface needs transport. And this transport happens through very specific rocks formed at extreme depths in the Earth's mantle. I'm talking about rocks like kimberlite and lamproite, which form more than 150 kilometers below the crust and under pressures that simply don't exist on the surface. This already eliminates 99% of the places on the map. In other words, if that rock isn't there, the diamond isn't there either. It's that simple and at the same time too powerful to be ignored. What few people understand is that these rocks don't rise slowly. They reach the surface through violent, rapid, almost explosive volcanic eruptions. Therefore, when they appear, they are usually altered, brittle, with a strange, often even ugly appearance. And here lies the big mistake. Most people look at this type of rock and think it's worthless. I've seen real stories of people who literally walked over million-dollar deposits because they ignored a rock that didn't seem special. It wasn't shiny, it didn't have a beautiful shape, it didn't attract attention. But for those who understand the geological process, it screams opportunity. I always explain it like this. The diamond is shy, but the rock that carries it isn't. It leaves clear clues for those who know how to observe. The mineral composition, the texture, the way it fragments, all of this tells a story. In areas where these rocks appear, geologists don't just dig randomly. They follow the trail, analyze the context, Compare it with known occurrences in Canada, Africa, Russia. It's almost like learning a new language. Once you understand it, there's no going back. 
You never look at a rock the same way again, because now you know that some of them are messages from the depths of the earth. And let me make a quick invitation here. If this makes sense to you, leave a like now, because it really helps the channel continue bringing this kind of knowledge that almost no one teaches. And comment below. Had you ever heard that diamonds need these specific rocks to reach the surface? I want to know if this is new to you or if you already suspected it. The most interesting thing is that from the moment you understand this secret, the next question naturally arises. How to recognize these rocks in practice, in the field, with your own eye? When I'm in the field, the first thing I notice isn't the shine, it's the texture. Diamond indicator rocks are rarely smooth or homogeneous like ordinary rocks. They often have an irregular, sometimes porous appearance, with visible grains or a rough feel to the touch. I always explain that this happens because these rocks come from a deep and violent origin, not from a slow surface formation process. A simple exercise anyone can do is compare two stones, one common from the area and another that looks strange. The difference is striking when you learn how to look. It's not about having a trained eye. It's about knowing what to look for. The second thing I analyze is the color and alteration of the rock. Kimberlites and lamproites rarely maintain a pure color. They appear in greenish, bluish or grayish tones, often mixed with earthy spots. Over time, these rocks alter easily, becoming brittle, almost crumbling in your hand. This is a great sign, not a defect. If you pick up a rock that fragments easily when struck with a simple hammer, this may indicate a volcanic rock rich in deep minerals. I always say brittle rock, in this context, is valuable information. Another essential point is to observe the surrounding soil. Indicator rocks rarely appear alone. The nearby ground often has similar fragments, accompanying minerals, and a coloration different from the region's pattern. A practical example. If you find small crystals of garnet, ilmenite, or even spinel mixed in with the soil, this deserves attention. With a simple magnifying glass, even an inexpensive one, you can already identify a lot. I'm not talking about expensive equipment or a sophisticated laboratory. I'm talking about conscious observation, patience, and method, exactly as experienced geologists and prospectors have been doing for decades. And let me emphasize something important here. These criteria aren't guesswork. They're the same ones used professionally, but almost never explained clearly. If you're enjoying this level of detail, leave a like now to support this content and comment below if you've ever found a strange rock that seemed out of place. Many discoveries begin like this, with someone paying attention to what everyone else ignores. And when you learn to recognize these signs in the field, the curiosity naturally arises to know where this has actually happened in what places in the world, and even in Brazil, these rocks have led to great discoveries. When I say this is real, I'm not exaggerating. Some of the world's largest diamond mines started exactly like this, someone identifying a strange rock where no one saw value. In South Africa, Canada, and Russia, the story repeats itself with slight variations, but the pattern is the same. Before the diamond, there was kimberlite. Before the mine, there was the keen eye. In Canada, for example, many of the most productive deposits were found by following fragments of these rocks left by ancient glaciers. In Africa, several deposits emerged from simple outcrops that seemed meaningless to those without geological knowledge. The method changes, but the principle is always the same, recognizing the sign before the reward. In Brazil, this logic also applies, perhaps even more strongly. Many Brazilian diamond-bearing areas were discovered far from any apparent brilliance in regions where the soil seemed too ordinary. Diamonds don't announce themselves. They hide behind subtle, almost timid clues. I often say that those who learn to recognize the right rock begin to see the ground with different eyes. Walking ceases to be automatic and becomes an investigation. Each unusual stone becomes a question. Each alteration in the soil becomes a possibility. And when this change happens, something curious emerges. The search ceases to be solely for diamonds and becomes a search for understanding. 
And it is precisely at this point that the journey begins to become deeper, more personal, preparing the ground for a reflection that goes far beyond geology. At some point, I realized that all of this wasn't just about diamonds, it was about how we perceive value. How many times have I ignored something simply because it didn't seem important at first glance? Nature teaches a silent lesson. What truly has value almost always comes wrapped in something raw, without apparent beauty, without visual appeal. The diamond is born like that, hidden, compressed, tested to the extreme, and only then reveals what it is. And life works in a very similar way. Learning to recognize signs, whether in the soil or in everyday life, is training your eye to see the extraordinary in the ordinary. When you start observing more attentively, you realize that opportunities rarely shout, they whisper. And those who learn to listen to these whispers begin to change not only the way they look for precious stones, but the way they make decisions, choose paths, and see possibilities that have always been there, waiting for someone willing to look calmly. If all of this made sense to you, then I want to extend a simple yet powerful invitation. Start training your gaze right now. Comment below. I learned to look at the ground. If you truly want to develop this skill of identifying signs where almost no one sees anything, this exchange is important because it creates a community of people who are learning to observe more attentively, whether in nature or in their own lives. And if this content is giving you something new, leave a like and subscribe to the channel, because that's how this type of knowledge continues to reach more people. Here the idea isn't just to watch, it's to learn together, test, make mistakes, observe, and evolve. And the more people training this attentive gaze, the more interesting stories begin to emerge, including about even more specific clues that the Earth tends to leave scattered around. So, the next time you find a strange rock along the way, remember this. It might not be there by chance. The Earth rarely speaks loudly, but it always leaves clues for those who learn to observe. And if you found it interesting to discover that stones can reveal hidden treasures, Wait until you see the next video that's already appearing on the screen now. In it, I show you how a common plant, one of those that grow in the backyard without anyone paying attention, can indicate the presence of a mineral treasure just below the ground. Click there on. If this plant grows in your backyard, you may be close to a mineral treasure, because this knowledge connects directly to everything you've learned here, and it can completely change the way you see the nature around you. See you later, gemstone hunter.